Howdy, welcome to the porch here with Kevin Stoda this evening. I'm uh, sharing today from uh, a writing from last year's Nature Conservancy. I liked it because I came across this article about uh, veterans becoming involved with conservation corps across the United States. Um, the article is called Boots on the Ground. Boots on the Ground. And uh, it shows a woman who's one of the uh, former veterans who's been, become involved with the uh, conservation here in the United States. I uh, said, so the article begins, a team of conservationists makes the case that veterans can have a career in the environment and a home in nature. Okay, here's the uh, main character in the, in the story again. Another main character, excuse me. Um, Fred Napoleon is the first to uh, to arrive at the ranch. Nicely dressed in a sweater and carrying boxed wine as a hospitality gift, he's the only one whose flight to Montana wasn't delayed. Napoleon, a retired army soldier who deployed in the first Gulf War, is one of 11 veterans gathering at Pine Butte, a remote former guest ranch in Western Montana, now owned by the Nature Conservancy. He sits in the kitchen as the organizers of this gathering, a fly fishing retreat, scurrying around, making lunches and final preparations. Outside it's calmer. There's dense white smoke to the west from the forest fires burning this August. It obscures the afternoon sun over the mountains of the Bob Marshall Wilderness. A spread of more than the, uh, one million acres of forest, alpine lakes and meadows. This is a grizzly bear country and one of the organizers hands Napoleon a can of bear spray before directing him to his sleeping tent. Uh, back in the kitchen, the three organizers scramble. They are TNC staffers, that means Nature Conservancy, but everything they're doing here is on top of their day jobs. Brent Lathrop, who served in the Army as a reservist from the Vietnam era through the Gulf War, is a director of TNC's work in Southeast Wyoming. Kathleen. Uh, Kennison is a former Iraq War media uh, medic who handles operations for TNC's Montana chapter, and Michael Kotolski, an e-learning developer and the wife of a career Marine, flew all the way from Hawaii and has been awake for 36 hours straight. They're part of a larger team that has taken on something of a second job advocating for veterans who work for TNC and helping connect the organization with veterans in general. They call themselves Veterans in Nature Service, or V-I-N-S, VINS for short, and they're one of the several specialized employee groups that have emerged at the organization in the past seven years. If some of you don't know, Nature Conservancy uh, is somehow able to purchase land through donations, and they try to protect that land for future generations. Um, this week, the group is partnering with a veteran service organization called Project Healing Waters uh, fly fishing to bring former military personnel to the corner, this corner of Montana for a guided fly fishing retreat. Project Healing Waters teaches veterans living with disabilities how to tie flies and catch fish at a similar gathering all over the United States. This week they have been invited to fish the preserve, but it is only the second such TNC uh, retreat uh, held there. It's a test of sorts, two communities figuring out how to work together and what they can offer each other. The dreams are big on both sides. Project Healing Waters is looking for more places for its members to practice fishing as a form of therapy. The Conservancy wants to connect veterans to landscapes as protected, and while doing so, recruit more veterans into cons conservation work. Easier said than done, Kotolski said. In Hawaii, she once walked into a career fair room of 600 veterans and only three had heard of TNC, she said. At the ranch, if the van pulls up and the rest of the veterans file out lugging fly rods, fishing vests, and wad uh, waters to small cabins. In the main lodge, the leaders tell the veterans the basics, when breakfast is, will be served, when exactly to get out uh, on the rivers to catch some fish, and perhaps the most important, how to use bear spray. The veterans mill around a bit awkwardly introducing themselves. They're strangers here from different states and different wars. One asked Kotowski whether TNC believes that climate change exists, adding that he doesn't believe in it. 
Others discuss hunting trips and dangerous encounters with moose in Alaska and bears in Washington state. One thing everyone has in common though, they can't wait to get on the water. There are many anecdotes and, um, excuse me. Let me continue where I left off. Um, I'll read you another story about a Q&A uh, from uh, Iraq War veteran Kaylee Kennison, an Iraq War veteran. Uh, she works for TNC. And uh, these are her personal effects. Um, I Here's the first one. I heard you wanted to be a vet when you were a kid. Yeah, she says, like a veterinarian, not a veteran. She laughs. I always liked animals. I had a pony growing up. I grew up outside. I lived in Western Washington. So we were always running around for us and picking berries, eating them, thimble berries. Yummy, delicious. But I don't know if I, I, I don't know. I never thought I would have a career in conservation. It didn't make sense to me then that th that was a way that you could help people. Instead, you became a medic in the army just a year out of high school. My first deployment to Baghdad was one month after I got out of training. I was 20 years old. We did 12 hours on, 12 hours off. Those first two weeks were insane, just completely insane. I mean, you see everything you can think of. People blown apart, not just soldiers, but the civilians too. Kids, I mean everything. How long were you in the military? Five years, two deployments. I spent two uh, years in Baghdad. I heard at one point during the deployment, you tried to grow flowers in the desert. I got hyacinths, tulips, mostly bulbs, because that was what was shipped well to me. I tried to do daffodils, but the soil was, there wasn't really soil. It's dust. We had these dust storms where it was high noon and the sky just looked orange. Did your uh, relationship with the environment change coming out of the military? Mm, I don't know. I guess early in life, I took a lot of it for granted. Before I would go out, and it was very much, I loved nature for what it could do for me, not for its intrinsic value. Intrinsic value. And now, well, my husband's a fly fisherman, but I don't fly fish as much. I still go along with him every chance I get because it gets me outdoors. And something about the wind and the trees and the sounds of Russian water and the fresh air is better than any other therapy I've ever gone through, you know? Take a look at this landscape. This is like nowhere else on earth. It speaks to your soul, doesn't it? And you want to give that to others? One of our priorities in Veterans in Nature Service is connecting people with nature. And I would love to see that happen with the veteran community. I'd really love to see us all leverage our resources that we have as a community and then build a community that needs it and deserves it and that can return the favor. In the process, maybe you'll get help and get a chance to help a few veterans just like yourself. Yeah, the conservancy community in general could. I mean, it really goes hand in hand with veterans. There are so many who get out of the military and they grew up hunting or they grew up fishing or they grew up hiking in wilderness spaces. We know what it is to be outdoors and to learn from the land. And that's something that translates so well. I think they're just not applying to conservation jobs. I think that they just don't know that this could be something they could love and that they could excel at. Sounds like a new mission for you, but this time in the world of conservation, it is kind of, I that I, I mean, I, it's a mission for me. I can still accomplish this. I can still do my part to help people and the great things. Conservations also are doing their part to help save the world as far as I'm concerned. So that's amazing. How many people can say that? Not too many. So that's a voice of one person saying that we need to get out and get vets involved in conservation corps or conservation activities and get them some jobs in that environment. Uh, forestry, you name it. Kennison isn't positive about how many for, um, vet, excuse me, Kennison isn't positive how many veterans work for TNC. When she applied in 2014, she had never heard of TNC before. She just needed a job and she needed one in Montana. According to Kennison, 38 employees have self-identified as military veterans out of about 3,500 TNC staff members working in the United States. That's only about 1%. As with all self-reported demographics, the team suspects that there may be others who have chosen not to identify because of a desire to keep their service record in the past or because of fears of not fitting in at an organization with so few military veterans. Hmm. 
Even so, TNC wants bigger numbers, says George Jacob, a TNC policy advisor in Albany, New York, and one of the co-leaders of the employee group. Jacob says they're, they'd like to be employing veterans at 6% of the staff, which is close to the percentage of veterans in the U.S. population. Veterans have experience working outdoors, he says, and come with a disciplined work ethic and often have a desire to participate in a mission that goes beyond profit, something that TNC and the environmental community could use. In the TNC group, he says, we like to say you can teach skills, but you can't teach attitude. But the transition is not always easy for returning veterans to see. It's just not a natural connection that people make, says Kennison. When you think of military, what do you think? You think of people in tanks or Humvees or people shooting guns. You don't think of conservationists. You don't think people that can care about the environment. So as this article is sharing, uh, it's time to change that and see if we can get more vets involved in conservation work. Yeah, why, why aren't there 6% of the population working in conservation work? There'd be 6% military uh, coming back and being involved in conservation across the U.S. Um, um, Lathrop suggested a social golf separates veterans and environmentalists ever since the Vietnam War. At that time, the environment movement was pushed forward in part by academics, a group that tended to receive da draft deferments. In the following decades, conservation became further politicized, creating the impression that those protecting nature rights not, uh, not have much overlapping interest with former military personnel. That old divide doesn't exist as strongly be between younger military personnel and conservationists today, Lathrop says, creating an opening for green groups like TNC to close that old gulf. Not to mention, Kennison is quick to point out that there's a segment of the American's veteran community that hunts and fishes and is very connected to the land. And most of them want to preserve it so that their sons and daughters and generations after them can experience the thing that they enjoy too. Well, howdy. Okay, welcome. Yeah, I just put it in there. Okay. Um, anyway, this is Kevin Stoda on the porch. I hope you enjoyed the YouTube channel and you get uh, some veterans to try out for those conservation jobs. Bye.